Hello, everyone. Hi, everyone. So thank you very much for joining this session. Uh, so today we will be talking about large language models and in particular about a common journey on developing large language models. And we will be illustrating that with my colleague Miguel uh, with a work that we are, have been doing at NVIDIA on training large scale language model for Spanish and French language models. So next, please. So I think we can skip the introduction. So I will hang it to you now, Miguel. Awesome. Thank you, Maria, and thank you, everybody, for joining us. So this slide is basically a joke, a uh, nonsense, because this is how people usually perceive uh, training a large language model. Actually, all the things that are here, almost all of them, are used in this talk, but they are hidden under with the frameworks, so the complexity is much lower. And in this uh, 30 minutes, what we would like to highlight that it is pretty simple to make these things work. We have attached the code to the slides of, of each of the steps that we perform in case you would like to replicate that in your systems. So what are we talking about? We'll talk about a trip. It was once Marian and I was talking as many times and we said, why don't we prepare something in our local languages in Spanish and French? Why don't we try to do that in our spare time actually? We have some allocate time allocated for experiments and we decided to to, to allocate that time for this exercise. So we moved from data preparation to pre-train a language model, to use it on other tasks like translation, Q&A, and summarization, to finally deploy that into production. Um, and while learning this, we, we will explain a few things, why huge models are important, how are we using this language model in a different way that we used to use, how we can train, the model in a distributed way, how we can query that in a distributed way in order to have a couple of language models, Mimi in French and Mimi in Spanish. So natural language processing itself is a, just a discipline that lets you do things with a human text and perform multiple tasks such as sentiment analysis, code generation, Q&A, summarization, and a few other tasks. And that's, that is what we are going to learn to do today. Uh, uh, but before that, I would like to, to mention a couple of things. First of all, someone noticed that the bigger the model are, the bigger the data sets are, the better the performance of the language model is. Actually, that can be extended to any discipline. Basically, in any deep neural network, if you make it bigger and you train it with more data, it will converge faster, which is really interesting, even if it is bigger. And also, it will, it will, uh, give you better results. In specifically for NLP, we started using a new architecture, the Transformers One, which basically overcomes some issues or, or problems that other approaches had like RNNs or LSTM. Basically by making use of the attention mechanism, which is a way to let the neural network not forget things in long sentences, uh, we will have a, a huge uh, increase of performance of these models. It is well worth to mention that this architecture has already been, is being currently used on many other domains, computer vision, automatic speed recognition, generative models, reinforcement learning. So it, it, it looks like, like it is a, a very good one, which also scales really good, which fits the previous result that the bigger the model is and the bigger data set is, the better the overall performance is. So, and we have seen that basically. In the last uh, two years, the, uh, the, the size of the models using a transformer architecture has increased 275 times. Just to give you some context, AlexNet was only a few million parameters. 10 years later, we are talking about 530 billion parameters. That's a huge jump. And it can only be supported by a specific hardware and also by a specific architectures like transformers. And that's why we use it. And, and there is a very interesting thing that we are moving from a paradigm, which is training a language model that we'll see was that in a few seconds, and fine tuning it to retrain that on a specific data set to make it work a specific task. We are moving from that paradigm that has its cons and Pros to a different one where we will just train a single language model and then we will query it basically feeding input data in a way that it will produce answers that corresponds to a specific uh, questions. So for instance, we have 
a task that can be considered sentiment analysis. This is a language model. And a language model, let's, let's start by that, is just uh, a, a, a neural network where you, you fit some uh, input text. For instance, you fit, my name is Miguel, and, and you ask them to complete a sentence uh, with a maximum of token or until it considers that it has finished. So in this example, what we are saying to the neural network is question, would you say this, this movie review is positive or negative? And then we add a movie review. I love that movie. And we ask the neural network to complete that, that sentence. And it will say that it is a negative. So it is performing a sentiment analysis task, but it hasn't been trained on that task. And that is really, really an interesting behavior. And um, actually, it behaves really, really well by following that pattern, which is basically in the input, making a task, that's, that's description. Some examples, we can add some examples of the tasks that we want to perform in this example is translate English to French. We have an English word, the equivalent in French, and then we add another English word, cheese. And we expect that the language model produces the translation because somehow it has not only learned the, the syntax of, of, of the language, but it also has some knowledge based on that huge corpus we have used to train our language model. So in this case, hopefully it, it returns fromage, which is the French word for cheese. And we can do that in a zero shot without examples and just the task description with a one shot or with few shots uh, example, which is basically adding a few examples. The great news is that we can get to a state of the art results by only using a few examples, basically with a big enough model and only 10 to the one, so 10 examples, we can get to a state of the art results. That's a huge say, a, a, a change in the paradigm because we don't need labeled data sets to train the, the language model for a specific task. We are using the language model as it is, and we're just querying it in a very clever way. Mary, I think we'll mention a bit more about this later. So that is what we are using. And here it's an example. Let me skip the video because we don't have that much time, but basically we, we feed some, so examples, English to French, and we expect that the language model would translate this sentence from English to French. We ask the language model to use 32 tokens in the answer. And if we jump here, uh, it actually returns the answer. It says, well, the, 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 the French uh, sentence for this English, English sentence. And it is really, really good. But once again, the, the magical thing is that we haven't had an English to French uh, uh, data set specific for translation. It's very likely that this uh, language model in its corpus has lots of examples of English and French text. And it has done the relationship itself. And that's fantastic. And, and it knows that it is translating because we guide it by providing a prompt and input sentence that looks like English and French examples. So, uh, how to do this? So this is our trip from data preparation, training a language model, querying it in a clever way, the one that we have uh, mentioned right now, and then deploy it to production. And we did that in only three weeks in our spare time because we wanted to, to tell the people that it is easy. If Miguel can do it, anyone can do it. That is the key message, don't forget that, okay? So, and, and then you have the code to, to do that. So for data preparation, we use an open source corpus as Orcas, Oscar, which is a multilingual data set. We focus on the French and Spanish parts of that data set, and we perform these steps. You can see here in the slides the, the link to the code that we use for each of the steps. We perform text duplication, language filtering, general cleaning, and blacklisting. Let's go into those details. Text duplication is basically when you uh, use a corpus that has been taking from internet, for instance, the chances are that the, the sentence, this is cool, happens lots and lots of time. Maybe we don't need so many examples of this is cool with one or it just works. So text duplication basically removes the, the duplicated sentence in your corpus to, to, to make it a training faster and in a more efficient way. Language filtering is, in this kind of data sets, the chances are that even if it is classified like Spanish, someone introduced an Italian sentence or an English sentence or maybe a JavaScript or HTML. So we need to make sure that if we want to produce a 
pure Spanish data, uh, language model or a French language model, we only use examples in Spanish and in French. Language filtering step, what it does, it uses a neural network to uh, analyze the, the sen each of the sentences um, and try to predict if the sentence is Spanish or, or French, and if not, just remove it from our, from our data set. Then we have the general cleaning step, which is basically uh, uh, this, even if these corpus are very clean usually, sometimes they, they have unexpected elements like uh, JavaScript or HTML or other things. We just need to get rid of them because we would like in this exercise to produce human readable text. So we are not expecting that to convert from, from Spanish to, to Python. We just want to, to be able to perform tasks that a Spanish or French speaker would do. And then the blacklisting. This is just an exercise because we will, we will like our, maybe some people would like to, but we wanted to avoid our models to be rude, to produce bad words uh, and or hate messages. So we performed some techniques. One of them was to remove the documents with at least two blacklisted terms. So basically we just selected um, some words that, does, that are not really good ones. And, and we remove any sentence that had at least a couple of them. Why at least a couple of them? Because some uh, words in our languages can have multiple meanings and some meanings can be valid and cannot be root or cannot be something that we would like the, the language model to produce. So uh, we decided that silly logic. It can be done during the training or it can be done as a post-processing step. We decided to do that during the training, but the other alternative also works. And we can do both. So just some figures uh, for the text duplication uh, exercise in, in, in a real world server, it took around 12 hours each. Okay, and it reduced the original data set from to half more or less from 282 gigabytes to 117 gigabytes. So we are saving time because we are reducing some amount. Uh, and we also did a very important task, which is the language models do not really have text as input parameter under the hood what they have sorry under the hood what they have is a uh, vectors numeric vectors so we need to 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 learn those numeric vectors that is uh, the tokenizing step we use a tokenizer and, and it just takes 45 minutes to convert the text here to a set of of ids which is a numerical representation of of our words um Finally, we perform one more task, which is to convert our data set that was originally in JSON L files to, to a binary format. And that is just because of, we will reuse those sentences multiple times and we want a very efficient way to load them and to, and to have them into memory. So it is well worth this, this uh, time consuming task, which is converting to MMAP format, but we need to do that hopefully all the code is here and you can see the, the, the command that we need to, to do that is pretty straightforward. And I think that with that, I, I can give the word to Marianne that will explain in detail with the next step that we did. Thank you, Marianne. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Miguel. So now let's deep dive into training the language model and in particular into 1.7 billion language model that we trained with, together with Miguel. So 1.7 billion is already big, right? But uh, how big is that actually? And let's have a look at that. So next, please. Okay, here we go. So let's actually start by doing some math. So for training a 1.7 billion parameter model, so if we consider a training in FP16 mode, right? So that means that the weights and the gradients are represented in FP16. And if we consider uh, using like one of the most popular optimizers today that we are using or its equivalent like Atom optimizer, so it will store 12 bytes per weight. So let's do the math. So this model during the training will take about 25 gigabytes. And this is um, not taking into account the data, the feature maps that are trained actually during the training, right? So, but if you have a 16 gigabyte of memory in your GPU, you cannot fit this model into, into that GPU. So as you can see, so here, as we scale those language models, so we need to actually develop some techniques to distribute the, uh, those models. So uh, next, please, Miguel. 
Here we go. So there are a plenty of strategies today with very different implementations of distributed training of neural network, and among which we can introduce the what we call the data parallel or the model parallel. So, so for the data parallel that you can see here on the left. So when performing data distribution, so like what we do is we copy the same model into different GPUs. Uh, and each GPU is going to actually process different chunks of the data and then uh, communicate the gradients. And this will have um, a cost actually of a gradient exchange in this case. For model distribution in this case, so the model itself is uh, split into different GPUs and this will allow to actually scale to larger models that will not fit to one GPU. And this is um, the case, for example, for the 1.7 billion if we use a small GPU. Um, uh, uh, but it will have some cost in, in uh, feature map exchange in this case. And we do actually have different type of uh, model distribution. I can like um, present the pipeline parallel, for example, distribution. It consists on splitting sequentially the, uh, the, the model, let's say layer 0, 1, 2, 3 of our neural network into GPU 0, 4, 5, 6 into GPU 1, and so on. And the tensor parallel distribution that actually split each layer into different GPUs. And this will, will, will have some cost in this case. So. Um, well, while we are training those uh, very large neural networks, so we have to choose the distribution techniques according to the hardware configuration that we are having because so we can have different type of costs in terms of communication actually according to the hardware infrastructure. Okay, next please. Okay, so we're, with Miguel, so we trained the model using NVIDIA library called Megatron LM on several DigiX1 servers. So each uh, server is um, composed by eight uh, V100 GPUs with 32 gigabytes. So Megatron LM is an NVIDIA open source library for training transformer-based neural network, and it integrates actually different distribution strategies such as the tensor parallel and the pipeline parallel and so on. So on the top, you can see the architecture of the model that we have been using and some hyperparameters that uh, we, we use for the French and the Spanish model. So those are for your reference and that those, those hyperparameters can be used as a kind of starting point if you want to uh, start experimenting. So um, uh, um, yes, and what we have been doing also for the training is we distributed our model using tensor parallel equal to two, and used the rest of the the the, the resources for the pipe uh, for the data parallel uh, distribution, and you can see the training performance actually here measured by the perplexity me metrics that you can see here. Yes, okay, so lower is um, better. And actually, the flexibility of the implementation of Megatron LM allowed us to run the training according to the resources that we had available. So we had several training rounds of eight hours each uh, with the of resources that we can allocate, and we used for each round the resources that we had from two nodes to sixteen nodes. So the, the, this training in total took us about five. Uh, thousand uh, GPU hours, V100 GPU hours uh, per, per model. Okay, so let's have a look at the results. Next. Okay, so here you can see some examples of text generated by the French language model. So on the left, the input prompt, and on the right, the text that was generated by the French language model. So the model is not only generating grammatically and semantically consistent text, but it was also uh, able to contextualize um, the generated sentences according to the input itself. So for example, here, um, the politic context with the president Emmanuel Macron or about the climate change or about the physics with the relativity theory and so on. Uh, next, please. I think we have some, some, also some, some examples for the Fre uh, Spanish <laughs> model here. So those are for, for your reference um, if you want to have a look. Okay, so now let's have a look at the downstream task. So we are, uh, so the question now is like how to apply uh, those uh, large language models for to solve a specific NLP task. 
So first we can continue training the language model using labeled data set for downstream tasks. And this is something that we know um, very well for encoder based language models such as BERT, for example, where we fine tune the classifier layers that we add on top of the language model. Uh, for GPT-like models, we can continue training further uh, with the next token generation on labeled data set in this case. But this is not very efficient and very costly, actually, if you want to fine-tune those models. And for large-scale language models, so um, that showed actually very good results in few-shot mode that uh, Miguel introduced earlier. So to generate the answer, what we can do is we can just simply query the language model by formulating the NLP task description, so such as you know, like translate from English to French or something like that, and to give some examples if you want to be on few short mode. Um, so, so what, you have some examples here on the left on some type of prompts that we need to engineer in order to ask the to describe the the tasks that, uh, for instance, for sentiment analysis. I, I love this movie by giving as input uh, the, the document uh, and would say like this, would you say that this movie is uh, positive or negative, you know, and, and ask the model to, to predict actually the why here, for example. However, actually similarly to what we have been experimenting actually on the French and the Spanish language model. So several studies showed that the, those models are very, very sensitive to the way we are engineering those prompts. Sometimes by changing actually uh, some terms in, in the prompt itself, let's say, for example, saying um, X was created by or X is created by uh, would actually uh, give you different accuracies of the model. So those models are very, very sensitive to the way we are describing the task. And the recent uh, area of research focuses on uh, new techniques called prompt uh, learning techniques. So let's have a look at that. Next, please. Here we go. So prompt learning techniques suggest optimizing the task description in a continuous space. So instead of designing the prompt in the word space or the token space. So we are actually optimizing the task description in the continuous space. So it uses actually prompt encoder showed here in the in this image in red here, a train to generate the task re representation in a supervised way. So in this case, the prompt token is tuned for different tasks while the large language model is frozen that you can see here in blue and can be used for different tasks. And um, currently prompt tuning techniques are one of the most promising um, research topic actually in large language models. Okay, next. And at NVIDIA actually, so um, we have a library called NEMU, an open source library where we recently integrated prompt tuning implementation. So to do so, so NEMU provides some tools to convert um, Megatron LM checkpoints to NEMU and some examples from prompt tuning and p-tuning. So those are uh, some of the examples uh, that you can have a look at. Uh, so we put the link here. Okay, next. All right, so so we train the model, we fine tune it, or we prompt learn it. So now, how we apply? So, so and we are happy with the performance of those models. Now, how to deploy those models into production? So let's have a look next, please. And let's start actually considering the memory footprint, the memory requirement for mo such models. Let's take, for example, the GPT-3 with 175 billion parameter model. So 175 billion parameter model in FP16 takes two bytes per weight, and this would actually take about 325 gigabytes in, of memory footprint. So this is really a lot for the inference. And there are some techniques to reduce the memory footprint, such as pruning or quantization. So next, please. So let's say, for example, if we prune half of the weights by using techniques like structured sparsity, for example, so the memory footprint of this neural network would drop to from 325 to 162 gigabytes. And next, you can see also uh, by using some other techniques. So next, Miguel, um, uh, such as quantization, for example, um, uh, uh, 
we can drop actually the, the memory footprint to um, about 80 gig, 81 gigabytes here. So, so quantization, basically, we take a model that is trained in FP32 or FP16 and find a mapping to represent each value in lower precision. And here in this case, in int8. And by, by quantizing into int8, for example, so we can, we can really reduce the, the, the memory footprint our, of our model. Okay. Next, please. Okay, so the tools, several tools can be used for efficient model deployment. So at NVIDIA, we have two tools that can be used for large language models, such as TensorRT and Faster Transformer in order to optimize the model. So we will see some features in the, in the next slide. And then, so we, we can use Triton Inference Server to deploy those models into production. So Triton allows to, um, multiple features such as dynamic patching, uh, model ensembling, concurrent model, and it supports many different types of models such as ONNX, TonsRT, or faster transformer execution backend. Okay, next. Okay, so as discussed, so we mentioned that we do we can optimize the, the neural network itself using two different libraries, TonsRT or faster transformer. Um, so, however, there are some differences between uh, those two libraries. So, for instance, TensorRT does uh, not support out-of-the-box uh, model distribution, so model parallelism, while Faster Transformer supports pipeline and tensor parallel out-of-the-box. Uh, Faster Transformer is limited to um, um, uh, a short list, I would say, of uh, transformer models, while TonsRT supports a variety of neural network, not just transformer model, but also other type of neural network like convolutional neural network and so on. And finally, Faster Transformer offers a faster inference for GPT-like models. Okay, next please. All right, so, okay, in our process for the French and Spanish model, so we use Faster Transformer to optimize the model. So first we needed to convert the PyTorch checkpoint that we trained with Megatron LM into Faster Transformer. And here you have an example uh, on the top left, actually, from Megatron LM library showing how you can convert actually that. So we will simply need to specify the tensor parallel mode use, used during the training. In our case, we uh, trained the model using tensor, uh, pipe, uh, tensor parallel equal to two, sorry. And we need to provide also the targeted the model distribution that we want to have at the inference time. So let's say, for example, eight or two or four or like how we would like to, 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 to distribute the model. Uh, so, and then after after the, um, optimizing the model, we can use faster transformer backend of Triton Inference Server to launch the server. Okay, so faster transformer provides also a text generation tool, and an example is showed in the left bottom here, and we will be actually showing that in the demo next. Okay, so we are running of time, by the way. That's okay, so let me. Okay, so let me move it very, very fast. So here in this demo, showing we are showing several inference um, configurations for the French model, and we are giving as input actually a like a, um, a prompt, la devise de la République française, and generating this next token, which is will supposed to be Liberté, and we can actually benchmark different type of distribution, different type of inference with FP16, and also um, we're using pipeline parallel or tensor parallel. We can see the GPU utilization here using one or two GPUs depending on the distribution that we are using here. Okay, so let's go very quickly to the conclusion. Okay, so in this journey, we use publicly available data sets and code. So we hope that we were able to demystify the development of large language models so that anyone actually who wants to tackle that problem can uh, get guidance and start, know where to start. And uh, honestly, once we know how to do it once, we can improve this entire process, customize the model, the hyperparameters, the data set uh, quality, we can scale to larger models, and so on. Okay, so we can just move on to next, please. Go move on again. 
All right, so from NVIDIA perspective, we are uh, actively working on this field. So we have the hardware and also the software solutions for efficiently training and deploying large language models. So I would like to highlight the Nemo Megatron software that offers a ready to use tools for developing uh, large GPT and T5-like uh, language models. And it provides uh, recipes for several scales uh, of uh, models and also tools for automatically search for the best hyperparameters. And it supports also deployment with faster transformer. So Nemo Megatron is now in open beta. So if you are interested, please apply. And, go. and with that, I think we we can stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you all. I'm not sure if we have Thanks. time for any questions or... Thanks, Miguel. Thanks, Miriam. So we do have a question by Svetlana. Uh, and she's saying, what's about the use of Triton? Yeah. Uh, Triton itself is it's a, 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 an open source uh, tool from NVIDIA that lets you deploy any type of deep neural network in production. And it also runs those neural networks either on CPUs or on GPUs. So why do we use it? Because it has lots of features. For instance, it lets you do model assembly, which means you can concatenate the out output of a model and feed it as a, the input of an X1. It lets you do things or like a automatic batching request. You have a 13th threshold. I mean, your application should provide a, a reply before than 300 milliseconds. And it will group all the requests, guaranteeing that all the clients will have that answer in that uh, threshold. And that's really interesting because it maximizes the use of the GPUs. Therefore, you need to use less GPUs in production to serve your customers. And those are just a couple of examples of the of the use of Triton Inference Server. 